you would think that we are hitting the bottle less these days, since the pandemic has literally hit pause on party going. Well, hardly, if statistics from around the world are anything to go by. Alcohol consumption has shot up in countries like the US, Britain and Australia over the past year. In this episode, I want to find out if in Singapore, we too have descended into an alcohol pandemic and how our drinking habits have changed since the onset of COVID-19. At least six specialty alcohol delivery sites have popped up here over the last year. And that's not counting all the clubs and bars that have started bottling their concoctions for sale. Some retailers say their alcohol sales have increased by up to 200% since the circuit breaker in 2020. But there doesn't seem to be any data on how our drinking habits have evolved during the pandemic. So I've commissioned market research platform Milu Insight to conduct a survey of 1,000 drinkers in Singapore. It's been one week and the survey results are in. I must say, some of the results are pretty surprising. Fifty-three percent of respondents say they're actually drinking less during the pandemic. But the rest, 37%, are drinking the same amount. And 10% are drinking more. And of the 10% who are drinking more, 43% say they are drinking a lot more in a week now. That is pretty sobering. To make sense of these numbers, I'm meeting with Stephen Tracy, who oversaw the survey. From the 10% that are actually drinking more, what have you discovered? We found that, uh, first of all, demographically, they tend to skew slightly male, and they also skew towards being 35 and above. And in fact, they've also said that they're more likely to be drinking alone more often since the pandemic started. Did you ask them why they're drinking more? We did ask them why they're drinking more, and the number one reason they cited was the convenience of being able to drink at home. 66% wow. chose that reason, but one of the things we noticed is that they're statistically more likely to cite work-related stress to drinking more. You put those things together, drinking alone, work-related stress, pandemic-related, reasons. It does mean that there's a segment here that is potentially worrying in terms of their consumption of alcohol. Right, because your work is home, everything's home, and after a while that, that line is blurred and yeah. it's yeah. easy to have a drink at lunch because you figure, yeah. I'm going to be home anyway, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, how much alcohol is too much? Well, a standard drink is defined by the Health Promotion Board as having 10 grams of alcohol. That's a can of regular strength beer or a small glass of wine or a shot of spirit. Men should drink no more than two standard drinks a day. As for women, they should drink only one. Drinking five or more in one session for a man and more than four for a woman is considered binge drinking. So are we binge drinking? Our survey shows that most Singaporeans consume a maximum of three drinks in one sitting, which is below the threshold, and that's good news. But with some drinking more often during the pandemic, does it necessarily mean our health is in the clear? To find out, I'm carrying out a bold experiment with help from a pair of brothers. I'm going to test whether drinking moderately, but more often, is really much better than binge drinking. Both will be drinking the recommended limit of 14 drinks a week for two weeks. Eugene will drink two drinks a day to simulate moderate, but more consistent drinking. And Kevin will binge seven drinks at a time, twice a week. We're doing this under close supervision by liver specialist Dr Desmond Wai. 
He'll be making sure that the brothers are in good shape to take on the challenge. So doctor, you have the uh, blood test results. What do they tell you? Let's start from Kevin, okay? Sure. Uh, Kevin, uh, okay. Uh, your liver is normal. In particular, we look at something called gamma GT. Gamma GT is an enzyme that are produced by the liver, the bile duct. Uh, when we drink a lot of alcohol, the gamma GT level will go up. Right. Kevin, uh, your level is normal. We also monitor a marker called MCV, that stands for mean corpuscular volume. MCV measures the size of the red blood cells. In people that drink a lot of alcohol, the red cells become bigger. Because the alcohol can uh, affect our bone marrow, they make red cells that are not normal. Kevin, uh, your MCV is normal. Kevin. Eugene? Yeah. Your gamma GT is normal, your MCV is normal, so both healthy young men, okay? okay? So what do you guys think? 14 drinks in a week. I think with COVID situation happening, uh, and also uh, after having my first son, uh, the drinking habit just kind of became non-existent. Okay. Um, so during this uh, research, I, I think what would help is actually just letting me know, is it okay to just have uh, a glass or two uh, a night? But now on average, you're saying you generally don't drink at all? No, I don't really even remember how alcohol tastes like. Wow, okay. Will it make a difference what kind of alcohol they drink? Whether it's hard liquor, wines, you know, with slightly lower percentage of alcohol, does that make a difference? Uh, for medical studies, no. As long as they drink the same gram, same amount of alcohol, yeah. whether they drink beer, they drink wine, hard liquor, it will be all the same. Okay, so you guys all set? I'm good to go. Yep, starting tonight. So here I am, comfortable at home. Got a few friends over for the weekend. Midway through the drinking session. Cheers! Whiskey! I think my brother and I, we generally can drink okay. But uh, between him and myself, we can both agree that um, he drinks better. Very curious how the difference in our alcohol tolerance level actually plays a part in, in the results. Some people can hold their alcohol better than others. If you can drink more without getting drunk, does that mean your body processes alcohol better so there's less damage to your health? So I've learned that Singaporeans consume an average of up to three alcoholic drinks in one sitting. Some have been drinking more often since the pandemic began. We're into day four of the experiment with the Lou brothers to find out how our drinking habits affect our health. Slept very really well last night, not sure if it was because of the two drinks. Just drank five units in the span of like 45 minutes or something. Starting to feel a little drunk. But I just poured myself one more. So how does alcohol make us tipsy? Well, when we drink, alcohol gets absorbed into the bloodstream. It circulates throughout the body, including the brain. And that's when you start to feel the effects. Alcohol triggers the release of chemicals that affect your mood and can make you feel relaxed. It also affects your brain's communication pathways, causing your reflexes to slow. Hey, that's not fair. <laughs> so fast. And your coordination and memory to become impaired. Alcohol widens your blood vessels and makes you feel warmer, even though your body temperature actually falls when you drink. Your kidney releases more water, leading to more trips to the toilet. This is what dehydrates your body and contributes to hangovers. Most of the alcohol is broken down in the liver, which can only process an average of one drink per hour. You sober up once all the alcohol has been flushed from your system.
So if we all process alcohol the same way, why do some of us hold it better than others? For some answers, I've arranged to meet Dr. Eric Wee, the specialist who treats patients with alcohol-related liver disease. So the ability to hold one's drink is known as tolerance to alcohol. And there are many factors that affect tolerance to alcohol. Okay? One is it could be a genetic predisposition to be able to take more amounts of alcohol, or it could be acquired through long chronic exposure to alcohol and the body adapts to the level of alcohol. Okay. But this doesn't mean that you are spared from the harmful effects. The harmful effects of alcohol are generally um, due to a byproduct called acetaldehyde that is produced when the liver breaks down alcohol. And this chemical can cause damage to our cells. So one may be able to drink loads of alcohol, but may not realize that this chemical is being produced in the body and exerting its harmful effects. When I have a drink, I don't turn red so easily. But I have some friends, after one or two drinks, they are totally red. Why does that happen? So what you are describing is actually a phenomenon called the Asian flush syndrome. About 40 to up to 60% of East Asians have this problem. Worldwide and globally, we are talking about perhaps around 6% of the global population who have this genetic problem. Oh, yeah. okay. So when you have the Asian flush, it means that you have a genetic problem where the enzyme that breaks down acetaldehyde is actually functioning at a lower level. So how do I know whether I'm just turning red or I have the Asian flush? What's the difference? If you have this Asian flush syndrome, in general, one to two standard drinks mm -hmm. will cause you to feel red and uncomfortable. Your ears will turn red, sometimes the entire face is flushed, and you will feel that your heartbeat starts going up. And if you continue to drink, when you have more and more of the acetaldehyde in your body, you will start feeling un unwell, you may feel giddy, dizzy, heart beats very fast, even nausea okay. if you keep pushing it further. Okay, yeah. so that also is the body telling you to stop. So some of us can drink, we will turn red, yes. but the Asian flush is when you have uh, very few drinks, not only do you turn red, but you feel all the you feel discomfort. You know, absolutely, yes. So what does it mean if I get the Asian flush when I drink? Chronic exposure to acetaldehyde within the body can damage DNA, can cause mutations, and can cause inflammation. And people who have Asian flush syndrome and high levels of acetaldehyde in their body, this is actually linked to increased incidence of cancer of the esophagus. Okay. So for this reason, um, people who have got Asian flush syndrome should not take too much alcohol. Beginning of seven units tonight. Well, morning brain is not working. But, um, feeling pretty thirsty, so probably will drink like a gallon of water, take a shower, and start the day. Slightly nauseated. Just having this fixed routine. Um, Every night before sleep, right? You know, allowing myself to relax, uh, to wind down for the day, uh, fifteen minutes, just to you know slowly uh, have the drink. I thought uh, this is a good thing actually. Cheers. What has all the drinking done to Kevin and Eugene's health? I'll soon find out. So, doctor, what did the test results tell us? And I discovered a surprising array of alcohol-free drinks that look and taste almost like the real thing. I'm investigating how our pandemic drinking habits are affecting our health. It's been two weeks since the brothers started their drinking experiment, so it's time for me to find out if this has had any impact on their bodies. So you guys are back from your experiment. You've been drinking 14 drinks a week. You drank two drinks every night. You had them just over two nights, those 14 drinks, right? What was the experience like? For me, the biggest observation, especially in the, the first couple of days, was uh, better sleep. Not only did I fall asleep much faster, but also I feel like uh, the sleep was a lot like, deeper in a sense. Because the next morning when I wake up, I feel like, you know, a lot more, you know, refreshed. But over time, I think over the next couple of days, the effect kind of drop, reduce a bit. Uh, but over two weeks, for sure, I, I, I do think that, uh, you know, I, I slept 
better. Wow. Just doing this, yeah. That's interesting. For myself, seven units a night. I don't think I was very drunk. I think I was adequately um, buzzed, feeling very nice and floaty and happy. Sleep-wise, I think uh, for the first few hours, I did fall into deep sleep. Lah. But I will wake up, you know, in the wee hours, feeling very parched, very dry, thirsty. And then after that, it's, it's, it's kind of harder to fall back asleep. Because I think the effects of the hangover starts to kick in. A bit of nausea, a little bit of a headache. So what they're describing is not really unusual, right? Sleep is well documented. Small amount of alcohol is a good sleeping medicine. In fact, some studies have shown that if you drink one to two drinks a day, your quality of life, how you feel about yourself, uh, about everything else, actually is better than people that don't drink or people that drink a lot. But too much alcohol has a problem. They will go to sleep very fast. But the sleep is a poor quality sleep. They tend to wake up uh, many times. They tend to snore. So interesting. So if you just have two glasses, it helps you sleep better. You wake up refreshed. If you have more than that, too many, then it's just the opposite effect. Okay, but let's see what the medical results have to mm. say. Let's talk about Eugene first. His MCV, the look at the size of the replica cell, is normal, like the last time. His liver profile is also normal. In particular, the gamma GD is normal. The results today, then, compared to the one done two weeks ago, they are almost identical. So the alcohol has not damaged his liver in any way. What about Kevin? Yeah, so Kevin drink a lot, but uh, I compare Kevin's results, the one done uh, today, then the one done two weeks ago, actually they are very good. Kevin's uh, MCV is still normal at about 90 something. Uh, his gamma GD is also normal, his liver profile is also normal. So if you drink 14 drinks or less a week, you are very unlikely to have alcohol-related liver damage. So it doesn't matter whether you drink a little every day or a lot a few times a week, so long as you stick to the recommended amount of no more than 14 drinks a week. There should be little impact on your health. But you drink more than that, besides the liver, you worry about the heart because you have heart failure. In the short term, it's the irregular rhythm. For the brain, in the short term, you forget, you feel headache, you feel lousy. Okay. If you drink more than 14 drinks a week on a consistent basis, it can make the brain smaller. So now that you know all this information, will that change any of your drinking habits? I probably will carry on drinking a couple of nights a week. Uh, but of course, I have to watch how much I drink. My advice to uh, Kevin is that uh, you want to try to avoid the hangover. Try to drink intermittently. Don't drink all the drink together at one time. Yeah. So space it out. Yeah. Drink a lot of water. Drink with food. Now knowing like, that drinking these two drinks might give me better sleep, I might just drink two glasses for some nights. If Eugene can tolerate two drinks a day, he can sleep well, that's good. But if we keep on drinking like that, his liver will break down the alcohol more effectively, more efficiently. So over time, the two drinks that he drink to put him to sleep, he may need a little bit more to put him to sleep. Okay, so it so, becomes three drinks and then four drinks. Correct, yeah. Before you know it, you're an alcoholic. Exactly, yeah. Now, having a glass or two every day can become habit-forming. And it might lead us to drink more as our tolerance increases. If that's the case, I want to know, are there alternatives out there if I want to enjoy the taste of alcohol without suffering the bad effects? I've arranged to meet the co-founder of an online bottle shop that sells the usual array of drinks, but with a twist. Hey, Emma. Hi, Safe. What do we have here today? We have a sparkling Chardonnay, a gin and tonic, a Savion Blanc, and a beer. Mm -hmm. And they're all alcohol-free. Did you say alcohol-free? Alcohol-free. So these all Zero. look like the real thing? They do. They actually taste like the real thing too. I find that hard to believe. They do. It's come a long way in the last few years. Uh, but we're going to put your taste buds to the test. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm going to go for it. So, th this... Yeah. so this is a, a, a light, organic, sparkling Chardonnay. How does that taste? It's nice. It's refreshing. Does it taste and... like alcohol? It tastes pretty much like alcohol, except it doesn't have a bit of that, that, that kick, kick, that yeah. buzz. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I guess that's the only difference. But otherwise, it looks, smells, it bubbles just like yeah. the real thing. Yeah. But why? Why drink alcohol-free alcohol? Yeah. Good point. Good point. A lot of people say, what's the point? You know, why don't I just have a Coke yeah. or a water? So like this, for instance, uh, is only 14 calories compared to 90 calories in a glass of sparkling Chardonnay. So you've got the lower calories, the lower sugar. So this is a nice crisp lager, and it's probably around 30 calories 
compared to 160 calories in a normal beer. That's not bad, actually. Yeah. yeah. And this would be yes. This is a gin, and gin and tonic. tonic. All these uh, are made in a similar way to alcohol originally. Made in the same way. Yeah. So you so your gin was made as a gin, and then they right. removed the alcohol. Uh, via a dip, couple of different methods. So you still will get that little kick of a little bit of alcohol because it may still have a little bit in it. Yes. So it's not really zero, not zero, zero, zero. So anything up to 0.5% is considered alcohol free. Yeah, I mean, this is great because this, this tastes really nice. I, I okay. feel like I can keep drinking it without worrying about that having too much. Yep. You yeah. know, and then driving home later on. <laughs> so who are the people who are drinking these drinks? It's the Gen Z market, mm, it's the 18 really? to 25s. They're more about clean living. And then you've also got the 40 plus people who have drunk their whole life and they want that <laughs> five o'clock beer and they're waiting for it. They've been told they should cut down on the alcohol. A lot of our customers as well are pregnant people. So the big question then is, how much do these drinks cost? At the moment, they're exactly the same as an alcoholic drink. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So why aren't they cheaper? One would imagine that yep. actually, usually I'm paying for the alcohol bit of yeah. the, the drink. Because they make it with the alcohol and then they extract the alcohol. So it's there's more work fermented. involved. Much more work, yeah. And it's not mass produced, but the market's massively growing. How has this market grown? We've only started in, in October and we've increased um, our orders by four times to date. Water, sugar, Yeast. Now that's all that alcohol really is. Uh, though the damage it can cause to our bodies can be pretty extensive. So has the pandemic driven us to drink even more? Well, with fewer social gatherings, Singaporeans are actually drinking less overall. But for some of us, like me, well, we're drinking more often because it's so convenient and we're home more of the time. And while a glass or two of wine may not be bad for my health, I'm gonna be mindful to not go beyond that.